Demonetization is the obvious buzzword in the times that we live in. But what does it really mean? And what is it really doing at the moment to the economy? And are we really ever going to become a cashless economy as the government consistently claims? Joining me is uh, Amitabh Kant, CEO of Niti Aayog, who is heading a committee that the government has appointed to push the country towards greater digital payments. But I'm going to start, uh, Mr. Kant, with the question that many are asking. Is the pain worth the gain? The pain that the country is going through, is the gain that you are promising actually going to materialize? Is the pain worth the gain? Uh, Rajiv, uh, India's ambition is really to be a $10 trillion economy in the long run. You can't do that if uh, the ambition and hunger of a lot of young people who are here is to grow at 9 to 10 percent per annum year after year, year after year. It's not possible to do this if you have a $2 trillion formal economy and you have a $1 trillion black economy. You have to formalize this. You can't be in a world where 86 percent of the transactions are in cash. You can't be in a world where 96 percent of the personal consumption expenditure by people like you and me are in cash. And the more cash you do, the more black economy you generate. And the world of digital transaction actually would lead to much better credit history. It will lead to greater amount of financial inclusion in this country. And therefore, it's necessary to formalize this whole black economy into a formal economy. That's the only way, only way I see India uh, going up to a $10 trillion economy. You know, you say it's necessary. But as I said, the pain. There's a demand fall, there's production fall, fear of job cuts, sentiment hurt, income cuts, fall in GDP growth, uh, and just the plain and simple cash cues, my money is mine. Now, given these, these negatives, do you really still believe that we are going to reach this promised land that you're talking of, of a 10 trillion economy? Uh, so, Rajdeep, I think uh, growth will be hit for a quarter, probably two quarters. But India is not a corporate entity which has to declare its corporate quarterly results. It's a nation. And a nation must look at a, uh, and must have a vision of a 30 years how this country is going to grow. And what this is going to really lead to is a lot of inflow of non-productive money into banking channels. That is going to lead to banks becoming healthier. It's going to lead to lower fiscal deficit. In the long run, it should lead to lower inflation rates, it should lead to lower taxation rates, and actually it should lead to a better equilibrium in the Indian economy, which should enable much more infrastructure funding to take place in India, much more resources to flow into health and education over a long-term period. But journalists like you have a short-term perspective. It's important that Indians, Indians take a long-term view. And it's very, very important that all Indians here must take a view of the next 30 years and how India needs to grow at 9 to 10 percent and become a big, big economy in the world. No country has been able to do it with such a big black economy. No country in the world has been able to do it with 86 percent cash transactions. You, you become a politician. You target the journalist the moment a question is asked. But more seriously, you know, the fact is you said journalists have a short-term perspective. You heard Dr. Manmohan Singh quoting John Maynard Keynes the other day saying, in the long term we are all dead. I mean, how long is the long term is the question to be asked. I mean, you say a government, interestingly, is not a nation. You don't have to declare quarterly earnings or quarterly results. But I think the people of the country have the right to know uh, whether three months, six months, when will the cash crunch end? When will we buy, be back to what you and the government are calling the new normal? Uh, so, Rajdeep, I've seen a lot of economists, some speaking in favor, some speaking very much against. Amartya has spoken out against it. Uh, you know, but nobody, none of these economists, none of these economists uh, have ever seen any case study of a country which has done uh, such a radical and a very, very, uh, you know, tough measure of demonetizing 86% of your cash economy. So we don't have empirical case studies or empirical data anywhere else in the world. And I think it's patience is important. Patience is a virtue. Please wait for some more time. 
before saying, before economists jump into this way and start saying that this is not good for India. Wait for another six, seven months. You'll see the results coming out. So it's important that we wait. But I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty confident that it will take India to a new normal. It will take India to a new equilibrium. Because after all, after all, we are dealing with, we in India, if there was almost about 17.5 trillion rupees, uh, almost 3.5 to 4 trillion was black money. And therefore, it's important to bring down that element and in, ensure that there's much greater level of digital transaction in this country. How, how will that black element actually come da down? You've now got the new 2,000 rupee note and many believe all that is going to happen in the next few months is that the 500,000 rupee note which has been replaced by 2,000, you'll have black money in 2,000s. Black has become pink is the belief. That's, that's what's really going to change. Unless you build in institutions, unless you build in reforms, unless you reduce discretionary powers, unless you have less government. Today, frankly, what you seem to have done is actually going to result, some believe, in having more government. There are tax rates being carried out across the country with the taxman having even more powers perhaps than he's ever had in a very long time. Doesn't that worry you as a former bureaucrat and uh, the CEO of Niti Aayog now? Rajiv, uh you know, important thing is that there's a huge thrust towards digitization, towards digital payment. My personal view is that there's a huge opportunity for India. This opportunity you will never get. You've got this opportunity because there's been a big disruption. And therefore, India must push it with all its energy uh, to go in for digital payments. And my view is that there are, there's a huge technology back end to it. What India has created is really unbelievable. You're the only country in the world which has a billion biometrics. No country in the world has that. India is the only country in the world which has a billion mobile phones. No country in the world has that. You're the only country with a unified payment interface where banks you can transfer, interoperable transfers from one bank to another. So technology, you're the only country in the world today which has a USSD. You can transfer uh, money from GSM telephones from rural areas. You've created Aadhaar-enabled payment systems where money goes like a bank. So you created an infrastructure, India's pushing for it. You talked about some rates taking place. You know, wherever, you know, country is moved towards a very radical gesture of trying to bring in transparency into your system. If there are some deviant behavior, if cash has moved out towards large amounts of money being found somewhere, government must take tough, government must take ruthless action against those employees, whether they are from government or whether they are from banks. Because such incidents should never again be repeated because they are being done at the cost of common man. You don't, you don't think somewhere that the supply links are going to be broken as a result of that. The disruption that you talk about, you know, is actually the breaking of supply links, particularly of small and medium enterprises. I'm sure some of them are here represented at the moment. They fear that those links will perhaps be broken and repairing them will take a long time, whether it's a carpet industry in Badoi, whether it is uh, uh, textiles in Surat, it will take a long time to repair those supply links. Uh, Rajdi, people like you uh, have all along criticized this government for a lack of a big bang approach. But when the big bang happens, then people like you do not have the stomach to bear it. And it's very important. No, no, it's not it's me. No, I, 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 no, no, I don't own, no, a, no. I don't own a carpet people, factory. I don't, no, no. I, so people must have the courage, people must have the determination to take the big bang head on. And it's going to cause some disruption. And a country of India where 86% of cash must have a little bit of disruption. And without disruption, some disruption, this country cannot grow. This country cannot uh, rapidly expand its economy. And it's very important that you must learn to live with a little bit of a disruption. We were growing at 7.5%. I mean, you know, I, I've often wondered when you keep saying, you know, uh, a country like ours needs to grow 10 trillion economy. We weren't doing too badly on the 8th of November morning. What was the, what was the urgency, the imperative to do it right away, to disrupt an economy which in a global marketplace that seems actually uh, floundering, India was seen as a shining star. Why now? So India was growing at about 7.6%. It is an oasis of growth in the midst of a very barren economic landscape. It's important to understand that if, you're, if you want to grow at 9 to 10%, imagine if you're going to put your informal economy, your black economy, and you're going to merge it with your formal economy, what happens? You start growing at 9 to 10% immediately. And that's what's important. 
you're doing a lot. Imagine there's only 1% people who pay taxation in India. How is it feasible? I mean, therefore, a lot of transactions in India are taking place, which are not recorded transactions. There's a lot of evasion of money. I mean, all that the government is trying to do is to bring it into the formal net, have a credit history of people, and that in reality will mean that banks will find it much easier to lend to small people, people below poverty line, and therefore it will lead to a lot of much greater uh, financial inclusion in this country. Actually, in many ways, this measure will lead, the digital push will lead to a lot of cash flows, flowing resources, flowing into areas of health, education, Will it lead to less government, in your view, since you've been in government for so many years, will it actually lead to less government in people's lives, or will it somewhere only increase the discretionary powers at one level that a government uh, uh, official has, possibly at the local rural level? Look at the number of rule changes you all have made from the 8th of November till today. And that is leading to bank officials and people at the bottom in, in various parts of the country having enormous discretionary powers. I saw in one village someone come, please show me whether it's your wedding card or not. 2,50,000 was the limit. He said, you go to the Tehsildar, let the Tehsildar give you an affidavit. You are creating actually a lot of discretionary powers in the, in the hands of people who haven't changed. You are saying, yes, change, disruption. The, the, I have to still deal with the same taxman, with the same bank, bank official, with the same tehsildar. You aren't changing people, you're not redu reducing government, you're increasing government. Uh, Rajiv, I'm a great portrait of uh, predictability, consistency, clarity of policies. I'm a great believer at governments being at arm's length. I'm a great believer in ease of doing business. And I believe uh, that government will take several measures to bring in predictability, consistency of policy and keeping uh, tax and government officials at arm's length. But it's also important to understand, and it's important to understand for everyone in the audience seeing here today, that this was a very, very radical measure. A measure like this has never before been taken in any country of the world. And when you take a measure like this, you're causing a huge amount of disruption in good faith. And when that happens, there are certain uh, sectors of the economy which get impacted, and that requires government to constantly react so money had to be put into rural areas, money had to be put into the hands of agricultural sector, money had to be provided to farmers who could then get into rabbi uh, crop, and so on. So government changes, made some changes of rules and regulation based on feedback from people, based on feedback from the state government. And that is critical, that is necessary. That shows that the government is alive, kicking, and is responding to the requirements of the day. I mean, how can you criticize a government which is taking decisions based on the needs of the people? That, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. The other way to look at it, it is well-intentioned, a questionable idea, but badly executed and planned. That when you, when you, what you say is the government is responding to the situation, my view would be the government didn't even anticipate the kind of cash crunch that would take place, the period which, uh, 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 through which we would have to go through. Now, the Prime Minister said 30th of December initially. Now he is not certain whether it will be 30th of December. You want to tell me by which time will the cash crunch actually really reduce in the, in the country? Uh, so, Rajdeep, there was uh, uh, almost about 17.5 uh, trillion rupees in currencies. Uh, almost about close to about 13.5 was in circulation. Rest of, rest of it probably was black money, which was, uh, which was hidden away. A lot of that, you know, and a uh, lot of that is going to come back into the system. Almost every, the way the de new declaration scheme has been done, almost every single rupee must come back into the system. Come back, and actually government will reap a very rich dividend through taxes and penalties. And actually, this taxes and penalties should actually ensure that government is able to spend far more into the economy. Uh, but my view is that the cash crunch, which should be sorted out in the next 15 to 20 days. 15 to 20 days. That's, so that's simply because there's a huge speed with which RBI is printing money. RBI has printed more money in the last three weeks than in the last three years. So it's, it's pushing for it in a very, very big way. But we must understand that the more, more cash that India has, mm -hmm. and it's important to understand this as educated people, more cash India has, the more black money there will be in the economy. And it's important that India gets away from cash 
and pushes itself into the digital uh, payment society. The way, it's very easy, it's very simple to do digital payments today. You have the back end. You know, if you were to do UPI, if you were to do USSD, if you're doing Aadhaar enabled system, if you're doing wallets, if you're doing uh, uh, or, uh, debit card, credit card, these are very easy means. These are very easy and simple means uh, for a country which has already started handling uh, mobile phones in all rural areas. So these are very easy and simple places. You know, I was in Jharkhand, and every single individual has got into digital payment. You go to Krishna district of Andhra, you go to Godavari of uh, West Godavari of Andhra, every single farmer, every single individual is doing digital payment through Aadhaar. You go to Jharkhand, 55,000 policemen uh, have been trained. They are in turn training 10 people. The problem is only with Lutians Delhi. Of, of which you are a very, pr yeah, 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 of which you are a very prominent yeah, yeah. member. Yeah, yeah. You are now saying that the cash crunch only exists in Lutians, Delhi. No, 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 no. I'll take you with me to Meerut. No, I'll take you with no, no, me no, just I, outside Delhi. No, no, I was not. The government. I'm not, was not talking about cash crunch. I am talking about moving on to, moving on towards my, my. I have been given the responsibility of pushing the digital payment. Yes. And my belief is that it's Delhi which must take the lead which the elite of Delhi must take the lead in pushing for digital payment. You mean, you mean political it's Delhi? E it's easy, it's simple, it's very, very easy. If you can handle a mobile phone, people like you must start training 30 Indians on how to do digital payment. Each one of us must do this. And that everyone who works with us must learn the art of doing digital payment. That's the only way India will move forward. And let me tell you, the difference between countries <coughs> and the difference between states will be the ones which get into the digital payment era will move rapidly forward, will become the number one countries and the number one states, and which remain backwards will remain backward states. That, that's possible, that digital divide, but it's interesting you use the word Latians Delhi, because Latians Delhi is primarily populated by politicians and bureaucrats. And journalists. And, and a, I don't no, I don't live in I don't live in Latians Delhi. I live outside Latians Delhi. You're attacking journalists again and again today. But I want to know what happens to a bureaucratic corruption and b political corruption. If the first step was serious about black money, you should do something about political funding. I mean, political funding is going to carry on through cash. That is that you are not going to eliminate. But you are going to now say that you know Latians Delhi has, by all means do something about bringing in stronger legislation to end political funding by cash. That's not going to change. Are you telling me UP election is going to take place through digital payments? Are you telling me that the leadership of this country is going to carry out its campaign that it is in, uh, in UP through digital payments? Will the opposition do it through digital payments? So I, I, you know, the politicians don't stand in line. The bureaucrats don't stand in line. It's the Aam Admi who stands in the line. No, no, I've, I've stood in line. You've stood in line? Uh, my view is that a, you know, a logical consequence and a logical follow through of what has been done means that you need to take several measures. You need to bring in greater, a much greater level of transparency, a greater level of consistency, predictability, simplicity in your tax policies, number one. Secondly, we need to clean up our real estate rules and regulation because land is a means of great corruption in India. And therefore stamp duties, state regulations, all need to be cleaned up over a period of time. And that should be a logical consequence of what has been attempted to be done. And the third is that we need to clean up the process of funding for political parties and for election purposes. And these should be logical measures over a period of time for, for India to become a completely formal economy. So you think this is not a single magic bullet? You see more changes coming in tax reform, for example, in the budget. Do we, you know, we, we are now worried that GST perhaps is an immediate casualty of what's happened. Do you see major reform taking place or because of the political gridlock that we are faced with, that demonetization has actually even prevented perhaps the uh, GST from meeting that April 1 deadline and the other reform, the predictability that you talk of tax reform. Do you see that happening? No, I think there will be a thrust for a lot of reforms. Actually, this government has done a lot in terms of reforms. It pushed for the Jam Trinity, the Jandhan. It pushed for the, the Rupee cards. 
It has pushed for the bankruptcy laws. It has pushed for the National Company Law Tribunal. So looking back, if you look with a proper historical perspective, a lot of work has already been done in terms, in terms of making uh, India easy, simple, in terms of bringing in digital financial inclusion. A lot of that homework has already been done, and I think it will just require a little more impetus GST? to take this work. GST, do you see it happening now by April 1, or is that over? That G dream over? No, no, GST will happen. I think we should leave it in the safe hands of the finance minister to drive it. It's a, it's a very, very tough act because you have to bring consensus amongst all states. You need 75% of the states on board, uh, two-third majority. So it's a tough job, but I think you should leave it to the, his diplomatic skills to see it through. I, I want to just get a couple of questions from the audience, but one last question to you. Intriguing that the Niti Aayog announced what some are calling a lottery with daily, weekly mega awards for consumers and merchants to encourage transactions to digital payments. It almost seems that you are now tapping into the Indian desire to get a little bit of more money. You're from Kerala, famous for its lottery schemes. So is it somewhere that you're encouraged? Is this an incentive? that you're offering people to turn digital. If you believe that people are so readily turning to digital, then why do you need a lottery scheme in the first place? Uh, Rajdeep, do you even know the definition of a lottery? I, I, I mean, a lottery means mm -hmm. that you're buying or selling a ticket. There's no buying or selling of a ticket in this at all. So you're sadly mistaken. There's no lottery. It's an incentive scheme which has been done very successfully in several countries that people who are already transacting digitally, they get a cash back of 1,000 rupees. 15,000 people get a cash back of 1,000 rupees every day for the next 100 days, starting from Christmas Day of 25th December. It goes on till April 14th, uh, Jayanti Ambedkar Day. There are weekly draws where people who have transacted digitally will get over a lakh. And on the mega draw, there's one crore for people who are transacting digitally already. But there's also a similar scheme for merchants. And this is critical, that merchants must get on board because they, in turn, will onboard consumers. And there's also uh, an attempt to give incentives and motivate the merchants to do more and more transactions. It's important. It's important because unless and until you are making a very major transition from people who've been handling cash towards digital payment, there's a psychological barrier, there's a mental barrier. You're trying to break that. It's not an easy job. It's, it's very, very tough to try to make people get into the digital economy. And therefore, it's an incentive for people who are doing digital transactions on a daily day, but it's definitely not a lottery. The definition of lottery, you should go back and read from the dictionary. Maybe I shouldn't use the word lottery. I should have called it a political sweetener. Somewhere it's a political sweetener, a way to actually... As you actually, it's, a, it's, a, it's an economic catalyst for driving digital payments. Okay, we can, we can disagree over the terminology. <laughs> Let's get in question. Mr. Puri, yes. Yes. Uh, can we get the mic? Take a look at this one. <coughs> Hello? Yeah. Amitabh, uh, I think the government has done a great thing by bringing in all the black money in, into the banking system, although they thought a lot of it would be extinguished, but it's not. It's come back. I don't think they, they uh, ass assess the ingenuity of the Indian brain in laundering money. Anyway, that's fine. What I'm not convinced about is the fact that you have stopped the supply of black money in a way, for once. But how, have you, how are you going to really stop the demand for black money? You know, uh, the bureaucrat, the policeman, the factory inspector, Nothing has changed there. You're still very low in the ease of doing business in this country. So I'm hearing a lot of plans about penalties and voluntary disclosure schemes and getting the black money out. But I'm not hearing what is plan B in terms of stopping the demand for black money. I mean, you are also put in charge uh, a department which is not known for its integrity and probity with the income tax department, right, to enforce a lot of these laws. So the demand for new black money, 
how is that going to stop unless you do some radical reform very fast? Otherwise, you're going to get new black money being generated. I can give you hundreds of anecdotes where demands are already being made. No, Arun, that's a very important point, and that's why I mentioned that uh, logically, a measure of this nature needs to be carried by several other measures as well, including bringing in tax reforms, making it very simple and easy. Uh, I talked about real estate reforms. I talked about reforms for election fundings as well. And these are critical. Make India one of the easiest and simplest places. Dismantle a lot of rules and regulations. Simultaneously, you need to kickstart your economy as well after some time, as soon as the mon remonetization process is over. So a lot of that thinking process is underway. And uh, let me assure you that government is doing a lot of thinking on several of these measures, on how to follow up on this radical... Give measure. us one. Give us one. No, government one seems to be more inclined, Mr. Modi, uh, seems to be more inclined to increase the power of the bureaucrat rather than to reduce it. Has he reduced any ministries? No. Has he he's combined ministries in different ways? But there is no reduction in government roles in minimum government. <coughs> I have seen no action which tells you minimum government. Public sector is expanding even further. There's no movement out for private sector, uh, for uh, disinvestment in any serious manner where you're actually getting out of the business. So this is all talk. Uh, so Arun, let me tell you that this uh, Government actually has been, the, the Prime Minister has been one of the biggest advocates of uh, ease of doing business. This is the only government which has actually scrapped close to about 1100 laws. No government has done this. This is the only government which has actually cleared proposals for dismantling public sector units. It is the only government which has said that pushing, has pushed for disinvestment after a very long time. So this government has actually pushed for a lot on ease of doing business. It has actually ranked and evaluated states and states have done a lot of work on ease of doing business. But a lot of that work is still work in progress, so you'll see many more actions underway shortly. Rajiv. Uh, Mr. Khan, uh, move to digital is very good as far as transactions are concerned, but what is it that you can do about the coming tyranny of digital? Uh, let me just give you, explain a bit. Uh, the kind of transaction charges that, uh, that uh, digital transactions uh, incur is between, uh, you know, anything between 25 to 4%. Today, if you have to pay back to your bank from Paytm account, you pay 4% out of it. Uh, no way will... Uh, no, no, that's, uh, that's a very important. It. No, no, that's a very important and a very good question, I must say. So government's objective is to ensure that over a period of time, and that's why it's announced several incentives, which the finance minister had announced. Uh, we've also, this is actually an incentive, what has been announced, uh, in terms of this lucky dip and so on. But the government's objective is to structure this right, because when these norms were fixed, there were very low volumes. Low volumes, high transaction cost was the norm. We are moving into larger volumes and lower transaction costs. And therefore, over a period of time, you will see, you will see a lot of that action is underway. Actually, charges have been done away with till 31st December. Over a period of time, you will see that digital transactions will become on par or cheaper than cash over a period of time. Mukesh Bhutani. Uh, Mr. Kala, sir, yeah. before I ask this question, let me Yeah, uh, can you just take the mic? Let me get a fresh mic for you. And I'll take one last from here. Let me add a disclaimer. I'm an outlier in the sense that I support demonetization still. I have three questions. You're, you're an outlier that you support demonetization still. The government says 92% of the people they polled in a WhatsApp poll support demonetization. But go ahead. Number one, I want to remind you of the commitment that the government made in 2015 to bring down the tax rates, corporate tax rates, from 30 to 25. This is your opportunity to do it because you have demonetization also. Second, why doesn't your government take a bold view to have at least the NDA state government start taxing some degree of agricultural income? Because let me tell you, that's the most transformational tax policy you can do. Number three, you are aware of the divide between all the noble policies that people in North Block think and the reality at the field level. Do something about it. You have several expert committee reports, uh, reports on your table for deeper administrative reforms. We don't want tax policy reforms. You need deeper administrative reforms. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, suggestions are well taken. Suggestions are well taken. Agricultural tax, we'll wait for that day. Yes. Just take two questions in a row because he is he's, he's running out of time. Yes. Yeah, one last oh, question. This will be the last question. Actually, yes. I have he, he's got a board of flight. He's got a board of flight. Yes. 
Yes, uh, taking on to what Mukesh said, uh, and then uh, uh, taking on your point on incentivizing uh, digital payments. Probably this was, was, was one of the very, very opportune time where government could have said, okay, if you make your digital payments, reverse the order, 99% of your digital payment, 10% tax rebate. So if your uh, cash payments are more than 1%, you don't get into that incentive. Secondly, <coughs> all political donations, if they are uh, digital, exempt. If they are not digital, uh, you know, you tax them. This is very, very easy to do. So you are saying, yeah. let's begin charity at home. He is saying link political, uh, uh, no, yes. uh, link digital payments no, to tax benefits. No, no. So a lot of work on uh, ensuring that payments which are made digitally okay. get less taxed and those which are through cash are uh, more expensive. A lot of that work is underway and you will see that happening and I said that, that actually over a period of time you will see in India that as volumes increase, this is also economies of scale, as transactions increase, the cost of digital transaction will very radically fall and actually our objective is to ensure that digital payments over a period of time are on par or less cheaper than ca handling of cash. But your second suggestion, I will surely pass it on to the right quarters. It's a very innovative suggestion. I, I'm going to leave it one last comment to this gentleman because he had raised his hand right from the start. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, black money generation basically was one to evade tax, another for paying speed money. Speed money to do business in India. Uh, we cannot avoid this question. Uh, demonetization was the first step. We expect this to be the second step which would be very uh, aggressive, Same, similar like demonetization. Uh, could this not have been reversed, sir? Yes, I, I am responsible for digital payment. I am not responsible for all the ills of India. You know, I, I, can't, I can't give an answer for all the ills of India. Uh, but I, I'm, I'll definitely try my best, to the best of my ability, to try and push the digital payment in India. And I think it's quite doable. It's if, if we are able to convert it into a mass movement, uh, because the back end has all been created, it's possible for India to make a very big quantum jump and achieve a very, trans a very major transformation using digital means of transaction. Amitabh Khan, I think that's a good way to end when you say that you're not responsible for all the ills of India. I just want to point out one fact. Since you've told us on this program that in 10 to 15 days the cash... You said... You got Mike, Mike. You said in 15 days the I, cash crunch I will said, be over. I said the speed at which RBI is printing notes, mm -hmm. hopefully the cash crunch, and there's a lot of speed with which it's printing, that it should end the cash crunch in definitely should end in 15 because to 20 the, days. Because the total but values my, of the notes my, released is at the yeah, moment yeah, a little my, under rupees yeah. 4 lakh but, crores. But simultaneously, simultaneously, there's a big thrust towards digital means of transactions as well. And that, lo the logic which I was saying was that you can't afford to have the same amount of cash in India. You should, the more cash you have, the more black money you will generate. So you should logically push, instead of keep crying for cash, people like you must ask people to move digitally for digital transactions and you know no i agree but as mr puri said for that yeah. you're going to have to bring in other laws you're going to have to change systems you're going to have to reduce discretionary powers you can't you know ask me to move to digital when the rest of the system uh, still flourishes on the basis of cash rajdeep uh, i mean i don't want to repeat that ad nauseum but i said that this is the demonetization can be one step but you have to necessarily follow by a lot of predictability, consistency and clarity of tax reforms, of ease of doing business, making India one of the easiest and simplest places to do business in. Amitabh Khan, this is, I repeat and I re reiterate, you said you're not responsible for all the ills of the country. Black money preceded you in the Niti Aayog. It, it isn't a problem that you've had to confront in Niti Aayog since you took over. And therefore, we will leave it to our founding fathers in 1947 as to why they... But I'll, I'll, do, but I'll, do, my, I'll do my best to give a major digital thrust to the economy. On that positive note, please give a big hand to Mr. Amitabh Khan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Um, and just, we'd just like to gently point out, since media was accused so fervently, that... <laughs>
that we did 10 10 sting operations and a big story on money laundering in the magazine anyway can i please invite uh, mr arun puri a chairman and editor in chief of the india today group to present mr kant with a token of appreciation